Boop, boop. What is up guys? My name is Semrold and welcome to the complete guide to master serum today We are going to be looking at the noise section and the mod section inside of serum as well as the matrix Which should go pretty fast these sections are very supplemental when it comes down to it You can make sounds with the noise only uh, you can add textures to a sound you can create atmospheric effects with it That's why it's there and it's very useful Keep in mind, you can also load up your own samples. Let's say you find a nice vocal shot loop that you like or a vocal lead. One shot, you can always put it into Serum here. And let's say for some reason you don't like the Ableton sampler or the FL Studio sampler, then you can utilize this guy to give your results. Now, by default, you're going to have analog section in the noise. You're going to have a bit of folders here. Not all of these because these are some of the packs I've made before and own. But you're going to have stuff like SOAR that you can explore. Um, you're going to have attack, attack misc, attack clicks. And then in the analog, you're going to have bright white noise, pink noise, and whatnot. You can use a lot of this stuff to add stuff to a sound. Sometimes some people will like like a lead, but they'll want like a knock on it. You can do you can do a lot with the noise to give it that, where you don't have to mess with the pitch at all like we've done in the past in this series, okay? Now, in the noise section, guys, here, I'm going to load up maybe like a vocal one shot. We'll use that one, and we'll put uh, this one shot mode up. And let's get straight into it. So first off, that one shot mode allows it so that the sample doesn't keep looping because essentially the noise section is just a sampler. It's just grabbing a wave file and playing. So here it's looping. That's all it is. If we put one shot, mode, it doesn't loop at all. Below that, we have a very important key, which is the key track key or which comes here. Now, what this does is the higher I go up, the faster the sample plays. But what that gives me is going to be a higher pitch. So I can do a lot of. You know, you can do a lot of cool stuff like that. Okay, let's change it. You know, pretty cool stuff. Okay, um, below that we have the pitch. Now this is useful if you want to time stretch stuff. So if I want to slow this down completely. And you can do a lot of cool stuff with that if you have like a bunch of reverb and a bit of distortion, mangle the sound. You know, you can create like very dark stuff or you can create, you know, kind of Martin Garrix vocal leads and all that good stuff. Okay. So the pitch will allow you to do that. Or for some reason, let's say you just want to go up an octave or down. 12% is the key there. 12% well, up one octave, 24% up two octaves and vice versa. Okay. A lot of times too, if you're going to import your samples, make sure they're in the key of C uh, or in the note of C. Makes your life a lot easier so you don't have to be using your ear or a spectrum analyzer to figure out the key on that, okay? Okay, next to that we have a pan, left pan, right pan, it's pretty standard. On top of that we have the starting point. So just, like, just like the phase here, like where you pick the starting point of your saw, that's going to do that for you. To the right of that, we have an RM phase. So um, again, if you guys remember, RM phase at 100% makes it random. So every time I hit a note, it won't start at the same position. You know, you can see it doesn't really do a lot, so you put that down. Unless you have a very long sample where you want to do uh, experimental stuff, where every time someone plays a note or you play a note, there's a different shot, then you can utilize that. But as of now, there's really no point for it. Okay, and next to that, we have the level. Okay, pretty standard stuff. Now, again, like I said, you're going to have a lot of basic samples already coming out of Serum, like bright white noise, which you can use. Uh, a lot of cool stuff you can do with that is you can either one... Make your own uplifters, and to make one just for fun, we can do something here where we have a low pass and then use a LFO here. We're going to maybe put that at around two bars and add it here. Let's say we want a two-bar uplifter. You know, you can see that. Maybe get rid of some of the low. And then we can maybe uh, not go all the way. You know, you can do a lot of cool stuff with the white noise. Make sure the retrig is on so it starts at the same position. Um, you can do a lot with that. So that's what the bright white noise is for. You can do a lot of techno hits as well. If you're into you can do very fast. You know, you can do a lot of cool stuff, you know, if you want to try that out. Now, below the noise section, guys, we are going to have the mod section. Now, the mod section, me personally, I use it a lot of the times to create variations of presets. So if I load up a preset right now from one of the new packs I'm releasing this coming March, at the end of March, well, you know, maybe like in two weeks or in a week, um, let's say I load up this beautiful plate set. 
Well, the mods here are gonna be, I, I like to use them to pretty much add change to a sound. You know, these are kind of different variations that you can do. If you're making presets for a company or for people that you're going to sell, a lot of times having these really does help a lot because it makes a preset have way more variations and way more possibilities. People will see the preset and it's like they have four sounds in one preset. So you could say you have 400 presets if you made 100 presets in a way. But ideally, what you do with it is pretty standard. So pretty much... I can add it to any knob here and then I could just move it up and down. So let's say I want to switch the wavetail position up, then you know, very standard. Now what's cool about this is let's say you're using it more like you're not making presets for other people. Well, the way you could use this is let's say that you want to automate yourself. You don't want to use the LFO, but you want to automate a bunch of stuff yourself very fast and they're all going to get automated the same way. Well, essentially what you can do is just grab a macro and whatever you want to automate, just do it like so. Let's say you want to add a bit of sync. Let's say you want to open up the filter a bit. Then that's where the mod is going to come into play as you can do that yourself. You know, let's say you want to maybe detune as well a bit there. We can do it. You know, do some cool stuff. Let's add a, maybe a bit of a hard distortion as it does that. We're going to do that here and maybe go. There we go. So that's what that macro is going to be for. When you put this here inside of Serum, you can click configure, click on the macro, and now you have that set up. So that way you can just automate that inside of Ableton or your desired DAW. You know, we can add a little bit more stuff, like maybe a bit of a Haas effect here with a bit of feedback as well. You know, add everything you want to. A bit of reverb. Yeah, you can do a lot of cool stuff with that if I put that loud. Uh, you know, cool stuff, you know, pitch. If you want to do kind of that kind of stuff, you can do a, an uplifter. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff, you know, the possibilities are endless, but those are there for that reason, technically. But if you're making presets for people or you're going to sell or give away some, you know, you can do a lot of different variations there where you could put like any name that you want there and, and they will be set up. Okay. Pretty standard. Below that, we're going to have the pitch band area. So on top of the mod here, you see this kind of mod. So if I put this into something and I move this mod, that's what this is altering. So if I have here like a digital, let's say a debus. This mod modulation is set to this mod wheel. So if you have a MIDI keyboard, you can route that mod to that, and then you can do a lot of cool stuff similar to what we did here. But now you can record yourself doing that if that's what you want out of your sound. Now below that, we're to the left of that, we have the pinch bend wheel. And to the left of that, we have the bend ranges. So a lot of times you guys will use presets and you'll try and bend it up. And you're like, it doesn't bend as high as I want it to. This is where you change that value. So you can go up to 24. Uh, you can go all the way down to negative 24. So a lot of times if you have progressive house bass lines where you have maybe just like a standard saw and you want to do that effect, which sounds like the saw is coming down every time it, it reaches the end of a ball. That's where you're going to program that so that you can do that. Because if I have this set to maybe like a negative two, you're not going to get that effect. Uh, you just get that, but you want that, then that's how you're going to set that up. Okay, so that's the bend range there. Okay, to the right of that, I've been using this, but I haven't really talked about it, and that's going to be your voicing section. Now, the voicing section is very important. First off, here you have pulley. Uh, that means you can, you're allowed, at eight pulley, you're allowed to play eight notes. So I can hit on the keyboard eight notes, and Serum will produce them. If I don't like that, I can lower it down to one, to three, you know, to kind of have a limit on it. Just keep in mind, the more notes you play, you're going to lose some of them if your poly isn't set up right. A lot of times, by default, I set it at eight because I don't think a lot of people are going to be playing more than eight notes unless they're doing some crazy ass shit. To the left of that, we have the mono. That allows me only to play one note at a time. Below that, we have legato, which works in conjunction with the portamento. So legato allows me to slide notes. With higher portamento, that's going to be the time it takes to go from note to note. So this is very important for bass lines that are just going to be gliding. You know, the higher the portamento, the, the more it kind of lazy it gets, it gets a bit dutchy. That's what that is there for. On top of that, we have the always, and that is very useful for sound. Let's say you're playing a punchy. 
That means it's always going to do it no matter if you slide your notes or not. Serum says, fuck it. You know, do you want it? I'll give it to you whenever you hit a note. So that's the cool thing with that. You don't have to slide your notes. Okay, very standard. Hi. Yeah, there it's too high up so the notes don't even reach so you just get like a very dutchy effect it's good for that stuff to the right of that we have scaled it has to do with the the god portamento time and the timing on it and then below that we have a curve now the curve is just going to be the portamento curve so usually you're allowed to do this so if you have it higher lower it you get a different response out of it so definitely cool to try out i rarely touch those features the scale or the curve but they're there if you guys want to use them now the last thing we have to talk about guys is going to be the matrix now the matrix is where you're going to have all your modulation so let's assume here that i want to do an lfo cut here and then i put an lfo 2 here and then i put an lfo 3 there you're going to see those start to pop up in the matrix you're going to have your source which is the source of a modulation you're going to have a curve, which again, you can switch around so the modulation isn't as rough or you need to push it harder to get the same effect. If you want that, that's where you use the curve. Here, you're going to have the amount so you can go in one direction. Uh, you're going to have your destination. So let's say here you filter cut off and you're like, no, I want to route that to the master tune and, and vice versa. Then this is where you're going to do that. You know, here we have the master tune in the global, which we will get into in next episode. However, I cannot set this guy just like that. Let's say I want to go here. It, it doesn't let me. So you have to go into the matrix to do these kind of modulations. Okay. To the right of that, we have the type. So we have unipolar, which is one directional. And then we have bipolar, which is two directional. So it goes front and back. In silent one and a lot of analog synths, a lot of the LFOs are bi directional. What that means is that if I want to open up this filter with this LFO, and this is one directional because it's only going in one direction up. However, if I make it I'll hold alt shift click, it turns it into bipolar, and I go front and back. And now when you have this kind of setting, then the middle here is no change, zero percent change. The top is all the way up, and at the bottom it's all the way down to negative change. Now, the next thing we have here, guys, is going to be the mod. Now, when the mod is activated, the auxiliary source is activated. Now, what this means is that if I add a mod wheel here, for say, and I have this mod wheel all the way down, we don't get the filter cutoff opening from LFO1. So, in order for that to happen, the auxiliary source, you have to have that mod wheel or whatever you have on it be a higher value than 1 or, or whatever 0% is. You can see that allows us to kind of go up on it. Now, this is useful. And, and usually what this is used for is like some of the presets like in a Moog Sub 37 analog synth. We would have LFOs routed to the to certain stuff, but we wanted someone to be able to control that when they wanted it to come in. So let's say you're making a melody and you're just like, you know, let's put the filter up a little bit more. then you would use the mod wheel to activate the LFO. This is super useful, again, if you're trying to do those kind of effects. And I find it's a good way to add stuff to, you know, make the sound sound more alive so it doesn't sound boring at all. To the right of that, we have another curve for that auxiliary surge, and then we have the output of the modulation, okay? Um, and that is going to be pretty much the matrix, guys. Now, I didn't go through a lot of sound creation here, guys, as at the end of the series, once we've gone over everything, we are going to be making episodes on the Complete Guide to Master Serum where we just make pure sounds. We might make trancey sounds in one episode. Well, another sound, we'll make bass house sounds, and another one, we'll make um, hip-hop sounds, maybe. We might do that. I don't know. Uh, techno sounds and vice versa so that you guys can learn how to put all, everything together. But as of now, those are going to be the settings we went through, the noise, the mod wheel, the, the pitch area here. Uh, we have our voicing, the matrix, and tomorrow we will hit the global, finish this off with the global, um, and that should be everything, guys. In the global, we do have something interesting called the chaoses, which is super cool, which we can get into, and the only way to reach those is going to be through the matrix. So that's where we went over the matrix today. So tomorrow we can, or the next time, sorry, we can use the chaos to use as LFOs, which are just crazier LFOs that are a little bit more random. But with that being said, guys, you guys take care. This is a complete guide to Master Serum, and I hope that you guys understood everything. Hopefully, you have a clearer mind on how to use the matrix on how to use the mods besides you know if you were to make presets for someone and the noise section but you guys take care and peace out